Hello and welcome to New Europe Studios on Place Jordan in Brussels. I am Dan Alexe. With us today, Mr. Lambert van Nistelrooy. He is a Dutch politician, an MEP, and the former Vice President of the Assembly of European Regions. Yes, absolutely. And inside the Parliament, you are also one of those in charge with devising the budget for the regions for the period 2014-2020. I was the main rapporteur of the you Parliament the main to rapporteur. negotiate with the Council, the European Commission. With the member states? With the member states. Um, and the most important result is that we could take regional policy budgets, investment budgets for all the regions in Europe and not just for the poor convergence regions. So this was a great result. And uh, what is the difference in this budget compared with the previous budget? Is it bigger? Is it smaller? Is it? Uh... Oh, the budget is, is is a little smaller, but the main. There were cuts everywhere. There were cuts no, in every. There were cuts, but it is also the question where to spend the money. The biggest change is that we limited the subjects where to spend the money, and to take it short, we go more to knowledge, uh, innovation, and high quality production. Uh, um, CO2 poor uh, economy and to the introduction of ICT than before. Before we spent a lot of money on roads. A lot of countries have um, a lot of roads now but no employment. Look to Portugal. So we need another economy. You were a vice president of the Assembly of European Regions and then you were an envoy to the, the Committee of the Regions. So you know both bodies. Yes, Why do we need two bodies treating with no, the, the regions? Without, without knowledge of history, we cannot understand this. We had first yes, the, the umbrellas, Assembly of European Regions, who had really advocated on subsidiarity. That was created 30 years ago. Yeah, we we celebrate 30 years yes, this year. It, but they had a big influence. Uh, the presidents, the members of the board, in those times, uh, Judy Pujol, Luc van der Brande, uh, Jacques Blanc, and it, it was a spontaneous construction. It had nothing Absolutely. to do with the European Union at the beginning. At the beginning, it was an open movement of regions thinking about subsidiarity and regional development, and they were influencing the concepts, the the ideas behind strongly with universities. So that's grassroots democracy. That was the, how they built it up and they exchanged their views and they got at the end in the Maastricht Treaty the permanent institutional body of the uh, Committee of the Regions in which we have the regions and the cities represented. Can we say that the Committee of the Regions imitated, in a way, no, stole no, the no, idea? No, of... absolutely not. It is, if you see this lobbying from the Assembly of European Regions, it's our baby. We wanted to have this uh, institutional influence. And it's okay, I think, that the Assembly of the European, of the European Regions is free to move. They can take their own subjects, like energy transition. They can take own initiatives in lobbying, and they do to the Parliament. And one main difference is that they have members that are not members of the European Union. They have regions from outside. Yeah, they have, let me say, the whole scope of Europe, uh, also where we work with our neighborhood policy. So they have even a broader agenda than the Committee of the Regions themselves. And in terms of budget? How do they finance oh, themselves? The budget of the committee of the, of the assembly of the assembly is um, members funded, and they try to get for good programs. They get the cooperation uh, from European Union, but uh, as such, they are still a grassroots movement. You were also involved in the the internal body of the assembly of the European regions that deals with borders. Yes. What has changed since you started this internal body? With all these tensions, with migration, with terrorism, what is the new trend? The first uh, remark should be that we have worked a lot on day-to-day -day cooperation across the borders. And uh, the borders are the relict of the past within Europe. Um, not solved every problem, but the cross-border cooperation is a, a normal European-wide instrument that is that is now, let me say, um, a, a permanent uh, has a permanent position. 
the new points that are important are, in fact, the whole migration, as you said, the, um, the, 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 the refugees, refugees questions, the southern part of, of Europe, the new tensions in the east that brought new questions. And I think that um, the European Assembly of, of Regions has a big task to take signals there, to, uh, to develop new type of programs to bring policy ideas to our um, decision-making bodies like European Parliament, like Committee of the Regions. Would you say that as, uh, as a Dutchman, you have culturally an inclination to disregard borders because the Netherlands, Belgium and Luxembourg were actually the yeah. first to, to suppress uh, the borders? Yeah, that's, that's true. We had the Benelux, but, but we learned. We learned a lot and that's why we have now the grouping instrument for territorial uh, cooperation that can be used in the new member states and even at the outside borders where possible to say that you give new responsibilities to those elected bodies on two sides of the border so that you don't have to bend every time to the national capitals. So this is absolutely important that we developed on basis of our, our experiences, new instruments. And this is a permanent debate with the Parliament, and I can say that the Assembly of European uh, Regions is one of those who every time ring the bell, every time put their uh, points uh, uh, for our debate. So it, there is still a good symbiosis. Uh, we also have two contrary tendencies today. One is to say that borders have no significance whatsoever, they will disappear forever. And the other one is, uh, when we look at the case of France, the territorial uh, réaménagement, uh, the, the change of internal borders of the provinces, it created a lot of fuss and buzz in France. Why? Yeah, but I, I, was, a re I was a regional minister in the Netherlands and I I was working on the local communities to merge them and to, I had a lot of us there too. So it's never easy to bring an institutional change. But let me say this on France. France has uh, brought also a clear position of the metropoles in this debate. And um, I cannot judge the outcome, but uh, I see all over Europe the movement now, not just of the regions, but also of the metropole cities in which they take the, the urban part and the surroundings in their portfolio. And this is a new movement and we have to see how it really works. If you have bigger regions like now in France, they need more competence. Otherwise, it's, we don't make progress in the quality of life for our citizens, companies, So it's a cetera. political matter. It's a political matter, but you can only judge about it if you see how many competences are brought to this level? Is this a substantially? Maybe, maybe there is a new equilibrium mm -hmm. in, in France. I, I, I can't judge. So what is the future of regions? I think in re Europe. Th there is no, let me start again. The future of regions is clear. You are safeguarded in our treaties. There is a, a quarter of our budget uh, is going to the regional development and the debate uh, for 2020, 2027 might be whether we go on with giving these envelopes to all the regions. I expect that we will even more limit our contribution for all regions on specific uh, themes, we call them smart specialization, where you have a special um, contribution to the wealth employment uh, in your country, but also on the, on the uh, European scale for uh, competition, uh, to be competitive worldwide, and that we connect these, uh, these um, initiatives from well-developed regions together with uh, less developed regions from uh, regions on the south of Europe that lag behind at this, at this stage, so that uh, we get an other formula uh, in which a rich reason gets also European money under the condition that they take with them in these developments other regions. So this is a kind of bringing new, new consortia. But even then, you need a strong decentralized basis. You need strong regions, strong cities. And this is what I expect. And talking about cities, you, you used the word metropolis earlier. 
th this is another trend that needs to be analyzed. The, the um, disappearance of the differences between the urban milieu and the uh, rural milieu. And you coming from the Netherlands, you know very well that uh, there is no difference anymore in the quality of the life in the cities and in the countryside. You have the same conditions. Yeah, that's, uh, that's true. We had a period in which the urban development stood with its back to the more rural uh, environment. And in this case, you see that the, the, the city has a, a, an integrated view on the quality of life, on nature development, recreation, agricultural production outside, inside the city. So there we have a new debate and I think the Assembly of the European Regions can easily absorb this uh, new development because it's in fact the, the, the same agenda. It's a, just a territorial uh, question who is in charge and every country on decentralized level, we'll have this debate. So don't come up with uh, blueprints from Europe. Let this development go on. And I think regions are strong. Look to, uh, to France, look to especially to, to Germany, where you see that uh, this, these questions are always on the agenda, but always solved. So in conclusion, you are optimistic about the future of the regions in Europe. The, the, the subsidiarity is the main, one of the main uh, principles behind our European project. The Assembly of the Regions has this card to play. And the subsidiarity, if we want to finish on a more jocular note, is a Catholic concept? Yes, it is. Okay. And I, I was really surprised. I was in the Assembly of European Regions when I came to the board meetings. In the beginning of the 90s, people sat together like Jacques Blanc, like Luc van der Brande, like uh, the, the, um, the, the, the German representatives, uh, and they, uh, Pujol, and they debated in such a bureau two hours about such a concept. And I was listening, being a regional minister in, the, in my first years, and really they were fighting for it. And this kind of subject, this kind of approach, um, came, of course, from some source, from the uh, encyclic. But after that, it was so strong and so much uh, under conditions when they brought it into the, this, um, uh, this treaties that it could be accepted by the socialists, by the, by the liberals, and by the national states. So this is how the democracy of Europe, how the popular grassroots democracy is based on a Catholic concept. Uh, yeah, that is true at this case. Mr. Van, Mr. Roy, thank you for being with us. I am Dan Alexe. This is the New Europe Studios on Place Jordan.